Have you ever wondered just how much voltage drop you'll get over a three meter cable on a fairly high current draw? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid Power Solutions and in this uh, episode we're going to uh, measure the voltage drop on this uh, 25 millimeter, three meter long cable. Uh, we're curious to see just how much uh, voltage drop occurs at different stages on the cable. So what we have here, we have our OPS 280 uh, battery with a JK BMS inside. That's rated at 200 amps. So quite a neat battery that uh, gives a very high current draw that we can test against. And uh, we've connected it to this Guyandel two kilowatt inverter. Uh, that's pumping out uh, 230 volts, 240 volts, so uh, pretty standard. And uh, we've got this three meter long, 25 millimeter cable, and uh, we have uh, bared the insulation at uh, one foot intervals, so 30 centimeter intervals. So we're going to be measuring the voltage at each of these intervals. Uh, connected to the inverter, we have this uh, simple household fan heater. <coughs> And uh, that'll allow us to, to measure with just the fan only about three or four amps. And then uh, on, on the first heating setting, about uh, 60, 70 amps, and then about 160 on the, on the heater going full blast. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got this multimeter here. I've uh, got the negative wire bolted on but the uh, positive the positive lead rather than not one of the positive lead I'm going to be uh, measuring the voltage at each of these uh, points here. One of the things I really like about the JKBMS is that you can turn it off while you're connecting everything and then when you're finally ready you can turn it on. So in the old days we'd use this resistor before we connect up the uh, inverter just to charge the capacitors up. Um, but with this new setup it's really simple. You just wire it all up when you're ready, turn on your battery. I can hear the the beep in there, so it's turned on. <clears throat> um, let's get the app going so that I can see the amperage that's being drawn. So I've got the uh, <coughs> the JK app running because I want to see what amperage we're drawing. And um, th this this cable that we're running is fairly thin. You wouldn't normally run this cable for a high amp draw. So 25 millimeter is uh, way too small, and it's a lot longer than you would run from your battery to your inverter. Um, at I would say at the absolute outside you would run a two meter cable but preferably one meter and it's going to be at least 35 millimeters if you have a high current draw. It all depends on how much current you're drawing. But uh, we're using this 25 mil cable just to show how much voltage drop you'll get when you start uh, really pumping the current through this. So uh, the app is running, so as you can see there, I'm uh, on zero amps at the moment. And uh, so let's turn our inverter on. <coughs> I'm using this relatively inexpensive multimeter. It's not the most accurate, it's fine, uh, but it, we're just going to be measuring relative voltage. Uh, if, I, if I wanted to know the exact voltage, I'd use a far better machine like this that uh, measures very accurate voltage and it's been calibrated. In that. But uh, this is fine. So. Right. We are on uh, zero current draw. Uh, this is showing at the BMS, it's showing 13.4 volts. But if I bring this down to here and I measure just on any, any point here, uh, that's showing 13.07. So it's slightly out, obviously. I measure over here. 13.06, so, right. So we got this measuring now. <coughs> uh, just on standby, so 0 0.4 amps going through. Uh, let's run it first on the, the fan setting. Well, let, before we do that, we just double check. So we're on 13.09. Voltmeter seems to be warming up. 13.09. Thirteen point twelve, slightly high, interestingly enough. 
13.18 seems to be going up as you go along there, but there's no current draw going through it. So yeah, this is also jumping around, but that's fine. So no, no current being drawn through and no voltage drop. So if we go to the first stage now, where we are running just the fan and this heater. Now if we start here, 13.067, let's just go right to the very end and you'll see no drop at all. So very low current, um, 3.2 amps current and nothing happening along this cable really, nothing dropping. Right, let's go up to the next stage. So we're going to actually kick the heater in. The inverter fan has come on. We're drawing 81 amps <coughs> through the system. So that's a reasonably high current draw. So let's actually measure along here the voltage is saying. So the DMS has gone to 13.09. Yeah, we're on 12.4. Twelve point three eight, twelve point three eight three six, twelve point three five ish, twelve point three two three three, twelve point three one, three zero two nine. Three zero two eight. So you can see the voltage is dropping along this cable here. Twelve point two nine. Twelve point three eight. Twelve point two seven. Fairly similar to seven. I'm trying at this point. Two six two. Two six two nine two eight. So <clears throat> a bit of current. So that's twelve point two eight at that point, and twelve point three six three seven at that point. You can see a bit of voltage drop. It's only an eighty amp draw, so that's not that much. Let's uh, bump this up one level. Not expect to see quite a difference here. to settle down. Also we have a Chinook flying overhead so just waiting for that noise to disappear. Right so we are drawing 180-ish <coughs> amps of this and uh, our voltage according to the BMS has dropped to 12.5 so this we're on 11.66 and At this point we are measuring 11.28 and at this point here we are measuring 11.64. So quite a, quite a reasonable drop, about a 0.3 volt drop uh, going across this cable on a 180 amp draw. So <clears throat> that um, is pretty much what we are expecting. 
Uh, if you have a higher current draw, obviously you're going to drop even more along this. Um, but it is pretty much what I was expecting. We wanted to see <clears throat> just how much current we drop on this fairly thin cable. It's actually doing pretty well, really, when you consider it. Um, so the the BMS, obviously, within there, as soon as you start drawing heavy current, uh, even lithium does uh, drop in voltage. So we've dropped below 13 inside there, according to the BMS. Uh, according to this, which is not that well calibrated, it's even lower, which is to be expected after the BMS. Um, there's always a higher current at the cells than there is uh, at the terminals. And that is because the BMS um, is measuring at the cells and there's some voltage loss going through the BMS. Um, the cables are starting to warm up, which is to be expected. But actually I'm quite... Uh, pleasantly surprised that this 25 mil cable is holding out quite well. As I said, we don't ever put uh, 25 mil cables in for inverters. There's always 35 mil or bigger. Uh, or sometimes we'll put two 25 mil cables in uh, if it's easier to do it that way. And about a third of a volt drop across the positive terminal. If you if you were to do the same sort of test on negative why you know negative and positive together you'll have a bigger voltage drop um, but we've got a very short negative cable here but that is usually the case uh, well usually in Europe and the UK the chassis of the vehicle is the negative and then your positive cable uh, needs to be isolated obviously uh, in a, in boats uh, both the negative and the positive are, are isolated for obvious reasons uh, with uh, you can't really electrify the hull. And um, so they would have a bigger voltage drop across the long negative run. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, we'd, we'd prefer to run 35 mil cable. And so a third of a volt drop, and there you have it. So hope, hopefully that will be somewhat informative and uh, help you to decide what size cable you're gonna put in. But if your cable was very short, I'd say not really much of a problem with a 25 mil if it's really, really short from the battery to the inverter. But if you have a reasonable uh, long run, then you are going to want to have thicker cable. So thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.